Hey, let's pause for a moment of science today and talk about freezing point, melting point, and boiling point. Um, when we, I say freezing point, melting point, boiling point, what I mean is the temperature at which something freezes, melts, or boils. And every object on this earth has a different freezing, melting, and boiling point. So I just want to give you two quick examples to kind of help you wrap your brain around this. Um, let's say chocolate. Let's talk about chocolate. So there are lots of different types of chocolate, but we're just going to talk about two of them. We um, will place, let's just pretend that I place a milk chocolate Hershey's Kiss unwrapped in this hand and I place a white chocolate, I think they're called hugs, unwrap it and put it in this hand. So basically I have um, a chocolate, a piece of cho milk chocolate in this hand, a piece of white chocolate in this hand. Same size, same shape and same body temperature. And if I close my hand and watch the clock for 30 seconds, then when I open them back up, I will see two very different things. Yes, this one will still be milk chocolate, and yes, this one will still be white chocolate, but this one will be a mess because it will have already begun to melt. And the white chocolate would still look exactly the same because even though they are both chocolate, they are different types of chocolate and they have different ingredients, different smells, different tastes, even different textures. They are two totally different substances. And because they are different substances, they melt at a different temperature. Um, so the white, I'm sorry, the milk chocolate will melt first because it is able to melt at a lower temperature, which means it has a lower melting point, all right? The white chocolate has to be much warmer before it will begin to melt because white chocolate has a higher melting point, meaning it has to be a higher or hotter temperature before it will melt. All right, now that's chocolate. Now let's talk about something totally different. Um, let's talk about water, okay? You probably already know the freezing point of water but do you, okay? If I asked you what the freezing point of water is, you will probably say 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. And that is true for fresh water, fresh water, okay? Remember, just like chocolate, there are different types of chocolate. There is also different types of water. So the two main, you have salt water and you have fresh water. Now, fresh water will freeze at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Salt water will not. Salt water has a much lower freezing point, which means it has to be at a lower temperature before it will melt. Now, to wrap your brain around that, I wanna talk about Titanic, okay? Titanic was a ship that was built, giant ship, that was built over a hundred years ago, okay? And they named it Titanic because the word Titanic means unsinkable. Well, you just jinxed it, right? You can't name a ship unsinkable because Murphy's Law, right? It's gonna sink, and it did. And here's what happened. It all has to do with freezing point. The reason why the Titanic sank is all about the freezing point. You see, the Titanic was sailing across the Atlantic Ocean, okay? And I think if memory serves me correct, the temperature of the ocean that night was like somewhere between, I think 24, 28 degrees, whatever. It was colder than 32, I know that. And so I, the, I, the salt water was not frozen. It wasn't cold enough to freeze salt water. So the ocean was good to go. And as you get older, you'll learn about movement and depth and things like that. But on a fifth grade level, that ocean was not cold enough to freeze. Okay. However, it struck an iceberg. Well, an iceberg is frozen. So how are you able to have an ocean of salt water that is a liquid and yet the ship strikes 
a, an iceberg that is frozen. So how can that be? If they are in the same body of water, how can you have a liquid in one part and a solid in another part? Well, the solution is that iceberg is made of fresh water. So that night, it was cold enough to freeze fresh water. So the iceberg was frozen because it was fresh water. The ocean was not frozen because it was salt water and they have different freezing points. All right, let's start with an experiment. And by the way, I have to just say this. I am sorry for this ridiculous outfit. I feel like I'm in that movie, My Cousin Vinny, where he says, yes, I'm wearing this ridiculous outfit for you. It's pajama day at school. So that's why I have on this ridiculous outfit. <laughs> so embarrassing. Okay, huh. moving forward. Um, to kind of celebrate freezing point and to push your understanding a little further, we're gonna make ice cream, all right? And to make ice cream without a machine, you have to have a really good understanding of freezing point. So, uh, the first thing we will do is we will mix our ingredients, okay? So, I am going to, uh, I'm gonna take a baggie, okay? Just a quart size baggie. And I'm gonna put my ingredients in it, my ice cream ingredients. And I'm sorry, my chair is squeaky. So in the bag, goes one tablespoon of sugar. One fourth teaspoon vanilla. Okay, so sugar and vanilla, mm, that smells good, and milk. Now, you can do this with heavy whipping cream or you can do it with just plain whole milk, but it has to be a fatty milk, so it has to be whole milk or else it won't work. It won't work with 2% or 1%. It has to be fatty. So I'm gonna pour one half cup of whole milk into my baggie. Ugh. All right, that's a fourth. Let me get another fourth to make a half. All right, so that's it, three ingredients. I'm gonna seal this baggie shut but I want to protect the mixture from the other ingredients. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to take a second baggie and place this inside, just like that. All right, and then seal it up. There we go, okay? Now for the science part of it. You will need a large baggie, a gallon size, and in that you will add about a cup of ice, all right, and a scoop. This is a third cup, but fourth, a third, eh, a scoop of this ice cream salt. I call it rock salt, ice cream salt, okay? And don't use, like back in the day, that kids would use the um, salt that they put on the road or on your porch or whatever to keep it from being slick in the winter time. Well, don't use that. That technically is has one ingredient that is different than the ice cream salt and it's not a healthy one. So. Use the ice cream salt. So you have ice and you have your rock salt in the back. Now what's gonna happen is we no longer have a freshwater mixture. The salt makes the ice stay that 32 and below degrees, but
but it will let it do that as a liquid. So this is going to be as cold as solid ice, but it will be in liquid form. And the reason why we want it to do that is we want it to be cold and be a liquid because we need it to be cold to freeze our ice cream. Now, if we kept it as a solid, it wouldn't be able to totally surround the bag of cream. So you really want that, okay? You want it to, you want the salt to turn the ice into a liquid. Now notice I'm not saying melt it because salt does not melt ice. Let me tell you this right here. You can go to your parents and you can say, why do they put salt on the roads in the wintertime? And your parents are gonna say, because salt melts ice. No, it does not. Salt does not melt ice. Salt lowers the freezing point so that it will be a liquid, even though it's so cold that it should be a solid. And that's what's going on here. It is a liquid, even though it should be a solid. Now, all you do is you shake, 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 all right? I won't sit here and shake for you the whole time. And then when you feel pretty good about it, you can take the baggie out and check it and kind of like squish your ingredients baggie. And it should be about the texture of a Frosty, like a Wendy's Frosty. So when you get to that point, that's about as good as it's gonna get. Um, and, and, and then you eat it and, I, and I'll get to that part, trust me. All right, so I'm gonna shake off camera and then I'll come back to you. All right. Okay, let's check in. So here's what we still have, okay? And if you touch the bottom, I mean, it is cold. I mean, my fingers are red because they are so cold because remember, just because it's a liquid doesn't mean it's warmer. It is as cold as ice, but it's in liquid form, all right? So I'm gonna take out the ice cream bag, okay? Take that out, and then I'm gonna zip this up. Don't pour this down the sink, all right? Don't pour this rock salt down the sink. Zip the baggie and throw it in the trash, just like that. Now let's get the actual ice cream out. So this was the protective bag, so I don't need that anymore. I can throw that one away. And then here's the actual ice cream, okay? Now I didn't wanna shake forever, so mine's more like a milkshake and I'm okay with that. Do I have a straw? Hang on, let me get a straw. All right. But all you have to do is open the baggie and you can either eat it with a spoon or you can drink it with a straw. I'm gonna to try to drink mine with a straw. Ooh, it's a little hard, but that's okay. Mm. Y'all. Science is delicious, I'm just saying. Mm. That's good stuff. I guess, I guess I should go now.